In this video, I'm going to show you how to use plugin actions, which is a new uh, preview feature inside of Power Virtual Agents. So today, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how the new plugin actions function works within PVA. So the first thing you want to do is you just created an empty bot. For this particular bot, just for uh, sample sake, I went ahead and I did add Microsoft.com using generative answers. Uh, you'll see that I even set it to medium so that it will respond um, to the things I would want for this demo. Um, but we're going to not focus so much on generating responses over knowledge. We're actually going to focus on plugin actions. And plugin actions is much more about being able to do generative AI in conjunction with connectors or APIs. So what does all that mean? Well, let's take a look. So if I go into topics now, you'll notice in PVA that there's this new interface uh, here. It looks different than it used to. And one of the things that you'll see is that now you have this plugin actions and you'll see that I don't have one and you could create one by clicking here but you can also create one by simply coming in and saying a plugin action. Now, when we go to create a plugin action, we're actually going to build a wrapper around a connector in um, out of uh, like a Power Automate connector from the Power Platform. And so for the demo that I'm going to do here and what we're going to work with, and you guys can go play around with this, is we're going to focus on this MSN weather one just to make something really simple. So we'll click on the weather. Now, if this were a different um, type of connector and this connector needed to be authenticated, um, which would require you to define a connection, uh, you would, in this interface, you would see uh, the information for you to provide the connection information to the API. But for the MSN weather, You'll see it went ahead and it just created it and we didn't have to worry about anything. So I move to the next uh, stage within the creation process and you'll see a display name and you'll see a description. Now, the thing is, the description is, think of it as the natural language training or the definition of what this thing does. So as we continue to move forward with plugin actions, this will be what a large language model understands this API to do. So while you can take the default description here from the connector, and you can even change from MSN weather from the display name and, and everything, just be aware that this right here is the key thing that will allow it to understand what it is that it's supposed to be doing. Now, there's also uh, features here, like if you want to ask the user if you want if they want to run it before they actually um, run this particular action. We're just going to take the defaults here uh, for this video and just go next. Now, we'll take a look here, and you'll see in the location that um, for the inputs. Notice we're at the input section right here. It has two required inputs for this API. So there's two different things or pieces of information that you have to provide to this API for it to work. And in this case, there are the two that you need is the location and units. And you'll see here that the connector populated the description right here so that the large language model understands what this uh, particular thing is looking for in the location space. Now you could modify this and uh, affect it again on any connector. And if you're building with custom connectors, you can describe these things so that people understand, so that the large language model understands what this particular piece of information you're needing is. And notice that right here it says, "How will this bot get it? Uh, get the input for this?" And you'll see dynamically fill it with the best option. The other thing is, is that over here. Um, you can you can put a different display name if you'd like. Uh, I'm not going to actually uh, affect that right now, but also know that you could here create an entity and be able to define what is an example of what you're wanting to do, or you can just pass the entire response. And by passing the entire response, the large language model is going to figure out what's the best piece of information that fits within this description of what you're looking for. So. We'll scroll on down to units, and I'm going to show you a different option here, which is instead of dynamically filling, I'm going to actually going to set a value. 
And in this value, what I'm going to do now, I could come over here and you could populate it with a variable. You can do all of all of that and that's all good. But in this case, I'm going to specifically say that I want things in Imperial. So I want the units of measure to come back in the Imperial format, not in the metric. So next, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next stage. And here you have different outputs. You can see here, these are all kinds of different outputs that are available. So if you want to write those into variables, you can do that. Um, but you already have that information that will be available to you. And you'll see how I'm going to do this um, as far as generating the response. So think of it that if I want to create a variable and populate it and leave it in place beyond the topic, I could do that. But in this case, we're just going to leave it as as is. Now, a future thing that will be coming here is the ability for you to dynamically generate a response. But you'll see here that I have the option to create a message or create an adaptive cart. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to generate uh, back a response. And the response that I want to do is uh, the weather um, in, and then I'm going to grab the location. And notice that I want to get the actual output location. So what did the API get? Um, is currently, and then we'll take and get a variable. Um, if you don't know much about this one, uh, know that if you want the, the current um, status of like what's going on, like partly sunny and stuff like that, uh, you, can, you can actually get this from that particular variable there. Um, then we can say, um, and is, and we'll go in here and we'll grab the temp. And notice here that I don't have the current temp, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the high here just for the demonstration. And I'm going to do it in Fahrenheit. So that way we have uh, created an output. So now the bot will respond with this piece of information with this connector. Now you'll get this confirmation screen here. So if you want to go in and edit anything, you can. But I'm going to go ahead and hit add. Now by adding this, what I'm actually doing is wrapping this connector with the information that's needed for a generative AI model to understand what the connector is doing, what this API needs to be able to do. Now, how do I actually use this? Well, what we want to do is we'll just come in and create a topic and we'll just create a blank topic. And what we want to do with this one is we'll come in here, we'll change it to weather as the, the title. I'll also edit it here and say, what is the weather? Okay. And now that we've done that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, I actually want to call an action. And notice now we have this plug in actions view. And this will make it where you can select that can, that uh, plug in action that we already did. And you'll see here that it's giving you uh, what the response is and the units and all of this. Now, if we had defined additional outputs, they would be written here to variables. So again, uh, all super valuable. Also, if I wanted to, I could have uh, provided information. Notice that because I didn't define an input uh, for, I've already manually set um, the uh, metric unit, or I'm, I'm sorry, the units of measure, you'll see that it's not offered here. Now, if I had left that blank, I could have also pre-populated that piece of information from a variable um, and then passed it in as well. So super powerful here. And if you didn't notice, this would also give you the ability to use a connector directly from PVA into um, even if you didn't want to use the generative AI pieces, you could call this connector directly and you're not going through Power Automate in order to be able to call the connector. So now let's just do one last thing. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go to Topic Management and I'm going to end the current topic. Now, once we've done this, we now have created ourselves a plugin action that can be called. And 
th this is going to provide us a ton of power here because now I can come into this spot and I can say, what is the weather? And because of the fact that the connector or the, or the plugin action needs the information about the location, notice I didn't author anything for this to be able to say, well, I need you to ask a question to get the location like you would normally do. It actually generated that using generative AI off of the plugin action to say, actually, you need to provide me this information. Now, I can pass into it that um, I am located in Atlanta, Georgia, for example, and just pass this in. And notice that it went ahead and it says the weather in Atlanta, Georgia is currently mostly sunny and is 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So I did all of this without having to author much at all, right? Because the generative AI is taking care of going and generating all the inputs and the questions for the information that, uh, that it needs to be able to work. But what if I said... What is the weather in Las Vegas? Notice that what's going to happen now is that it actually slot filled. So I didn't, even though I didn't build this to ask this question or whatever, it picked up that Las Vegas as the entity within it and then went ahead and passed it in uh, to the API on the back end and get it without having to ask me the question. Now, the beauty of this is imagine if I had multiple questions I needed to ask. And let's say that it was like a ordering a pizza. I could very easily say, I want a large pepperoni pizza. And then it, let's say that you needed to provide the crust type that you wanted. Well, it would then ask me, well, what crust would you like? Because it's already got the topping, it's already got the size. But now, if it's asking me about the crust, I can say, actually make it a medium sausage pizza, uh, pan pizza. And it would figure out that the crust type was pan, and it would make all the changes. So it turns it into a very dynamic conversation, and you as the author don't have to build all of this. This is something very unique in PVA. Um, and what we're doing with plugin actions. So I wanted to share this little quick video just to show you how to use this and encourage everyone to go out and start uh, playing with this. I hope this was super helpful for you guys. If there's other things that you'd like to see, as always, leave it in the comments. Please like and subscribe to the video. And as always, you can uh, easily go and try out PVA by going to aka.ms slash try PVA. And again, thank you again for your time.